Oh, what a sweet day today is. I got a little gift in the post. Yes, SNK have sent me the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro for review. Yes, this behemoth of a fighting stick. Uh, it has 20 games built in and it's made from high quality parts. You can hook it up to a Neo Geo Mini. You can hook it up to a PC. Here we are, here's the box. This is the American retail version, not a sample. This is retail. Um, it's due to come out, it's either out now or it's out very shortly. Uh, speaking of out, my throat is just about to give out because I'm a bit, bit ill. I've got a bit of a sore throat. Um, I'm losing my voice. So hopefully I get through this unboxing and testing with my voice still in one piece. So without further ado, let's see what we've got in the box. Now, unfortunately, my box took an absolute hammering from stateside getting to me here in the UK. But I had a quick look inside just to make sure that nothing was damaged and everything seems okay. However, because I've already previously opened up some of the bits and pieces, it may not look as pristine as the box that you will get if you decide to purchase this 150 euro controller. So here we go. <coughs> So inside, the first thing you see <clears throat> is this. Hi, this is ASP, your new friend. Woohoo! New friend indeed, the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro, the ASP. This is just simply a little flap which you lift up. It's a little cardboard inlay. We can put that down to one side and then we can see through the slightly translucent plastic veneer the image of the stick itself. Now I may need two hands to do this. I'm going to hold on to my phone with one and see how far I can get through. Okay, so... We'll take the stick out and we'll look at that in a moment. But for now, you can see that they've got sturdy, sturdy packaging inside, making sure that everything in the box, regardless of how dinged up the actual box is, remains safe and solid. I mean, this is really, really thick, really thick. I have to really clench down hard till my fingers go red to even leave the slightest of imprints on that. It is really well packaged, really well designed. So we have in here the Neo Geo instruction booklet. So it's basically just a pamphlet. It unfolds, it's in multiple languages. And uh, yeah, basically it just tells us the different modes of operation because you can use this stick in different ways. We also have a nondescript white box, which if we empty it out, contains <clears throat> Neo Geo stickers and a right angled USB adapter and some pads for the controller. So you can stick it down on the surface to make sure it doesn't slip if that takes your fancy. Also, you get a USB-C power cable that is Neo Geo branded. Very nice branding there. Looks really cool. Very nice indeed. But who cares about a power supply when all that you want to look at really is the stick itself. So let's do that, shall we? And here we go. And there we have it. This is the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro modeled loosely upon the Neo Geo CD controllers. It's got this kind of bone shape styling to it. It's very smooth plastic with a slight grip finish. It's, it's very nice. And you have this nice little smooth line across the whole unit just for a bit of style. It doesn't really add anything to the, to the, uh, the controller, but you know, it looks nice. You have a round topped joystick that is clicky and it has a fair bit of travel and it's very comfortable to use you can either use it with a small finger grip you can use it in the palm of your hands quite comfortably top of the hand you know or the claw grip you can claw grip that quite comfortably as well 
So the buttons. Suitably clicky, suitably responsive. They're not Sanmar buttons, I don't think. But they are high quality buttons nonetheless. Nice spacing between the buttons. Very comfortable to use from the look of it. So, <clears throat> on the bottom, we have a headset jack. So that if you are using it um, with the Neo Geo Mini or via TV, you can plug your headset in there and just get the sound directly through it. You can also connect other controllers to it for, for multiplayer games. Uh, it has the USB-C connections there uh, for the uh, Neo Geo Mini additional controllers. I'm not certain if other controllers will work on this unit, but there is a possibility that they may do. On the back, we have, sorry if I get my shadow out of the way, just a very simple sticker showing you that it's, uh, it's using one amp of power. Very, very little power, really. On the right-hand side, you've got a simple clip here, which houses a rather lengthy USB cable. Now, this is what you use to connect to a, a PC. Oh, also on the housing, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a gap there so that you can keep the wire out and reattach this bottom base. Uh, without you know trapping the wire in any way shape or form so you can hang the wire out like this and you can close it back up without any issue whatsoever so we'll do that now you can see that it sticks out quite comfortably there no obstruction whatsoever for the rest of the stick on the front you have some connecting uh, ports here you've got USB-C for power on the left hand side you've got a full-sized HDMI cable to plug into a TV so that you can play the 20 built-in games directly from the stick. And you also have a USB port here. Now, we don't know exactly what features this is going to bring us, although obviously diagnostics and firmware updates are a possibility. Um, there are rumored to be hidden games unlocked via the USB cable here. Um, the rumor has has it that there are 20 additional games built into the stick and there is a, either a special button combination or a special file that you put into the USB uh, to unlock those additional games. On the other side we have our basic connection buttons. So we've got turbo for auto fire, we have options, select, start, three levels, I will assume that's for the auto fire, and a power on button. So. <clears throat> impressions of the actual unit are oh, it's quite weighty it's got a solid base if I put that plastic down there we are it's got quite a solid weight to it it's not going to slip around a great deal even without those additional pads you know it's going to be quite comfortable I, I normally play with one knee so I'm resting my hands on the buttons and the stick and I'm playing on one knee even holding the stick alone on my knee it's quite weighty it's quite well balanced it's not over on one side the the joystick doesn't outweigh the buttons and vice versa it's equally balanced and it's rather comfortable I'm, uh, I'm actually looking forward to using this so um, before we go ahead and do that let's just have a look at it without the box in the way. Let's marvel at its splendor, shall we? You can also get replacement tops for this stick, and they are available. You can get silicone tops, you can swap out the parts. But I think, as it stands, it's rather nice, just as it is. You know, as I say, on a table, Without the pads stock on, there isn't a great deal of slippage there. There is a tiny bit, but not a great deal. Those pads included will completely eliminate that, I would believe. Okay, so that's the overview of the stick. I quite like it. Um, a lot of people may not like the fact that it's white. It may show up fingerprints, but, you know, if you clean and maintain it, 
I think it will look lovely and will last for years to come. But never mind about the aesthetics, how does it play? Well, let's hook it up to the PC and we'll try a few games actually included on the device to begin with. And then after that, we will look at games on PC. A few moments later. Okay, and here we are. This is the main menu. So what games do we have available on this system built in? We have the King of Fighters 95. The King of Fighters 97. The King of Fighters 98. The King of Fighters 99. The King of Fighters 2000. The King of Fighters 2002. Fatal Fury Special. Fatal Fury 3, Road to the Final Victory. Garu, Mark of the Wolves, also known as Fatal Fury 4. Samurai Showdown 2, or Samurai Spirits 2. Samurai Showdown 3. Samurai Showdown 4, Amakuza's Revenge. Samurai Showdown 5 Special. Art of Fighting World Heroes 2 World Heroes 2 Jet, which makes World Heroes 2 completely irrelevant. World Heroes Perfect, which supersedes all of the other World Hero games and should be the only World Heroes game on the system, really. Ninja Masters The Last Blade 2 
And last, but by no means least, Kizuna Encounter Super Tag Battle. So there we have it, there's your list of 20 pre-built-in games that are already unlocked on the system. If you're not a fan of fighting games, it doesn't look like the game library is for you to be honest. As I said, there is a rumour that there are an additional 20 games to unlock, including things like Metal Slug. And of course there is the possibility that new games can be added via the update function. At this moment in time, at this stage of the game though, this is what you get. You get very very basic simplistic options for screen size and filtering but we will cover those more in depth a little bit later on in the video you have a language option but funnily enough no matter what language you choose the games are all played in their native japanese format so when you play in english the games will be in japanese they are based on the home versions of the neo geo not the arcade mvs it's actually the AES versions of the game. So you do get some options with some titles which will allow you to change the blood color, change the language actually in each game, but each game will have its own individual options for that kind of stuff. As for the Arcade Stick Pro's emulation system, to my eye, it seems flawless. Uh, it sounds flawless to me. It sounds exactly like my Neo Geo does. As far as I can tell, you know, my original Neo Geo isn't running on HDMI, admittedly, but to me, everything looks and sounds exactly like the real deal, which is a huge plus point. I get so frustrated when these mini boxes or mega boxes or all-in-one compilations come out and they either look like shit, they sound like shit, or they have disgusting lag in them. Now, the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro does not have any of those problems and I am really happy about that. In fact, they even maintain individual Neo Geo intro screens, depending on what game you play. So, older Neo Geo games will have the original Neo Geo splash screen, newer games might have the Giga Power Neo Geo screen, some might have 100 Mega Shock. Everything is exactly as it would be on an AES Neo Geo, and that is really good attention to detail, really good emulation. I'm very happy about it. You've seen the games, you've seen the emulation quality, but what about visual options? What about visual flair? Well, we do have a couple of options for that. And let's delve into Garou Mark of the Wolves to look at it in detail. So, to make sure it's a fair comparison, I'm going to use save states, which the emulator on the Arcade Stick Pro kindly offers. It allows us four save states per game. It also gives you options to remap your buttons, basic stuff like that, but I'm not going to delve into that. What you want to see is the visual options, right? So let's go through them. So to begin with, you have my personal favourite, a 4x3 ratio square picture with no filtering whatsoever, pixel sharp beauty. These hand-drawn games, in my opinion, really deserve to be seen pixel by pixel. It gives you an appreciation for how much work went into these games, and it's my preferred way of playing. You have a choice of viewing the screen at a multiple of its original resolution, which will leave black borders at the top and bottom, or you can opt to stretch the screen to fill out your entire vertical screen space. Either way, I think this is the best way to play these classic games. You don't lose any detail. Everything looks really crisp at 1080p, which this system runs natively at, which is far higher than a lot of other all-in-one systems are. Uh, most run at 720p. Seeing this at 1080p is, is glorious. However, if you don't like black borders and you want your game to look a bit stretched and slightly ugly just to get rid of them, you can do that with this device. It, To be honest, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Stretched out to 16x9, um, it's serviceable. It's not my preferred way of playing. I prefer keeping the original aspect ratio of 4x3. But the option's there, you know? If you want to play like this, then be my guest and be the Arcade Stick Pro's guest. It allows you to do that. 
And just like in 4x3 mode, there is an option that allows you to stretch out the game even more to slightly outside of a multiple of its original size so that there are no black borders around the edge of the screen. This fills your TV entirely. So you get a big, big stretched out wide picture. Do you want to completely bastardize the look of the games? Then you can turn off pixel scaling and go to something like smooth scaling which is a bilinear filter and as you can see as a combination with widescreen you lose so much detail with this it just looks like somebody smeared vaseline over the screen um, it is just you lose all the detail all the sprite work looks meh and of course you can mix and match your bilinear filter with 4x3 ratio um, still looks like ass, but it looks slightly less ass. From a distance, it looks okay, but if you're right up to the screen, or you're playing this on a nice big TV, you're going to see that blur, and for me, it, it puts me off. It's distracting. But some people like blur. It's, it's a regular filter. It's in plenty of emulators out there. It's in plenty of classic games. It's, it's an understandable feature to add although it's not one that I'm ever really going to use in my personal use. Now unfortunately this is where it gets ugly. There are scanline options available on the system however they're slapped on top of the bilinear filter so rather than getting that super sharp pixel that you can cut yourself on you get a blurry mess with black lines streaking down the middle of it. It looks like garbage. Um, I don't know why they added the bilinear filter on top of the scan lines. Um, and it's a great shame because I kind of like scan lines normally. But I want them so that I can see every pixel on screen look so sharp and so beautiful. When it's like this, it just it, it looks like shit. I'm sorry, it just it just looks terrible. Um, and when you stretch out the screen to 16x9 with scan lines and bilinear filter, it's it's unusable for me. It's it's horrible. I, I think this is the worst way to play these games. Again, if you want to play it like this and your personal opinion thinks that it looks good, then by all means. But to me, this ruins the beautiful artwork that the Neo Geo games had. It just completely pisses on it. And it's a shame too, because there aren't just one type of scanline available on this. You've got longitude, which is the sideways scanline. You've got vertical scanlines, and you've got 45 degree scanlines. And personally, I think 45 degree scanlines would look brilliant without the bilinear filter behind it. If it was just the, the option to have 45 degree scanlines, I think it would look pretty good. Even, you know, in that stretched out aspect ratio of 16 by 9 but no unfortunately SNK missed a trick much like they did with their minis uh, apparently I can't say for myself I've I've not owned a Neo Geo Mini although I do want to get one um, but I've heard that the bilinear filter and the, the the screen options kind of ruin the experience and it looks like that has happened once again with these scanline options here in my opinion, you're best to stick with the good old-fashioned pixel by pixel perfect graphics. But there you go. Options are options. Some people may like them, but it's definitely not for me. And it's definitely not implemented well. What also boggles my mind is that every single game of these 20 on the Arcade Stick Pro is a fighting game and that SNK took the time to categorize these games as FTG, fighting game. Um, why do that when every game on the stick is a fighting game? Also, why are some series like King of the Fighters really really well represented and yet other series like Art of Fighting only have one game from the entire series. 
why do games like Fatal Fury have Fatal Fury 2, 3 and 4 without the original game being on there in the first place as well? The first Neo Geo game that really took prominence and, and really got people's attention is missing. The same with The King of Fighters 94. You know, the game that started the whole KOF series is not there. Why? It's not a licensing issue. King of the Fighters 2001 is a licensing issue. I can understand why that's not there. Because at that time, SNK and Playmore and other systems, uh, other companies, were, um, were kind of vying for the Neo Geo name. I can understand why KOF 2001 is not there. KOF 94? No excuse. That should be on there, 100%. Same with Metal Slug. Where's Metal Slug? What about things like League Bowling? What about side-scrolling beat-em-ups? You know, things like Robo Army, things like Sengoku, things like Mutation Nation. All of those are missing. So the game's library feels a bit too samey. And um, I'm, I'm a fighting game fan. There are loads of us out there. And there are a great selection of games on here, but I just don't feel it's diverse enough to satiate most people's appetites that don't already have a Neo Geo. The Neo Geo Mini had 40 games on it. I think that would have been a fairer number to put on this fighting stick. You could still keep your 20 main beat em up, sure, but I would throw new things into the mix, like uh, puzzle games, like um, Money Exchanger, um, possibly Puzzle Dupont, things like that. You could also add in Puzzle Bobble if you could get the license from Taito. You could throw in. Um, a whole different range of genres as well as the fighting games to show people the width and breadth of the Neo Geo library which was admittedly fighting game heavy but it had some gems in sports, it had racing, shoot 'em ups all these other great genres were represented on the system and it would have been nice to have seen them represented on this stick. Anyway We've talked about the emulation on the stick. It's a really good package, to be fair. Overall, the emulation's superb, and it's so convenient to have everything all in one unit to take and put a lug into your TV via USB and HDMI and just relive the arcade days. But what if you want to use the stick standalone? How will that work for you? Which is what I'm demonstrating here. I'm gonna be playing Street Fighter 3 Third Strike with this stick. I've mapped my buttons, so it, it maps quite comfortably on main. Uh, it uses the the stick uses uh, hat switch settings. Everything else is as you would expect. So let me put some coins in and see how this bad boy goes. So as you can hear, the joystick is quite satisfactorily clicky. So this is where I'm going to switch to game footage, so that you can see how it actually plays. It's hard to explain the weight and how comfortable it is for me and big hands, and the, the amount of uh, palm rest you get on this controller, it just, just feels lovely. The buttons are responsible and fluid, the stick has a nice spring back to it, so when you let go of the stick, it feels very nice to touch. Fire buttons off super quick. Like that. The stick isn't going to turn you into a pro overnight, though, so you, you know, your skill level will determine how much enjoyment you get out of the stick. But for me, I'm liking this a lot.
And there we have it, the controller has been tested with a variety of emulators, variety of different PC games, um, in a variety of styles. We've tried racing games, we've tried fighting games, scrolling beat-em-ups, puzzle games, you name it, the controller works quite well with it. I also decided to give the stick a bit of a durability test. I gave it to the roughest, toughest durability tester I know. And his verdict is, the stick is sturdy and it's going to last a long time, even if you give it a bit of a beating. Let's cut the bullshit, shall we? What is this worth? Is this worth the $129 or 149 euro stroke pounds the company is asking for? Um, it depends, really. I think, on the whole, if you ignore the fact that there are built-in games and we just focus on the stick itself, the stick is well-designed, well-manufactured, and is almost worth the entry price as it stands. You know, the joystick is solid, it's very comfortable to use, it's nicely balanced, as I mentioned before. The buttons are responsive. You can mod these to actually use Sanwa parts if you so wished, but I'm quite happy with it as it stands. Um, I just wish it was compatible with more devices, really. Um, I've tried it on the Nintendo Switch, that didn't work. I've tried it on an Xbox One, unfortunately, even though this does support direct its input, on PC it does not support the Xbox One which is a shame I would have loved for this to support more however there are more and more fighting games coming out for PC and there will be more and more use for these sticks in the future with the fighting game community growing by the day on PC and of course not to mention emulation emulation yeah, you've got to love an arcade stick for emulators it doesn't matter what machine you're emulating there's something about these Big clunky sticks with these nice, nice round tops on them. The nice responsive flexi buttons. It's just so much fun to play on one of these bad boys resting. With one of these just resting on your lap, you know? Um, so for the stick alone, I would say it's almost worth the price. Um, if you're not interested in the built-in games, then yeah, I, I would say if if um, you see it reduced slightly to 100, snap it up immediately if you only want to use this on the PC. Now, ignoring the fact that this works on a PC um, and focusing solely on the fact that this is a plug-in Neo Geo games console that plays games under emulation from what I can tell pretty much perfectly, um, let's, just, let's just run the numbers, okay? So you've got 20 games built in with a rumor that there are 20 more to unlock in the future. Now, you can buy these games in other places. You can buy uh, Neo Geo games, for example, on the Xbox Store. Uh, on the Xbox Store, every game costs £6. So, £6 times 20 games. You're looking at the cost of the stick almost by itself, just for the license of the games. You know, not including the stick. Not including the compatibility of connecting it to a Neo Geo Mini if you own one. Um, and the fact that it's a contained, solid, lovely unit that is sturdy and is going to last you a long time. Um, if you're even remotely interested in Neo Geo fighting games, I would say this is absolutely worth it. And if you consider the fact that you can run it on PC, you can run it as a standalone, you can run it with Neo Geo Mini, and there are opportunities to unlock further features with a firmware update, which may allow other systems in future. It may add additional games. And of course, um, unofficially, you can add extra games that weren't included on this with uh, a few files, including games for other systems. But that's another story for another video. I'm going to ignore that completely uh, for the time being. And I'm just going to say, for future expandability, and for what we have out of the box on day one, the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro, in my opinion, is well worth having. And I'm not just saying that just because I'm sponsored and I, this was sent to me for free. Um, I would have bought this with my own money anyway, I think, um, because it suits me down to the ground. The games are, well, it's a shame that the games haven't got more variety. As I say, they are literally all fighting games. 
The SNK RK Stick Pro, in my opinion, is well worth the cash. I think it's really cool. I like it. My kids like it. They can get to grips with these big, comfortable buttons that are evenly spaced. So even the smallest of hands can cater for this well. Big hands like mine, it's, it's more than comfortable. I can grip this any way I want. I can grip that shaft quite comfortably at any angle. I just think this is a great stick. Bottom line, end of story. Thank you very much to SNK for sending this to me. Thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then.